Hey all, Matt Hepworth here. And a few days ago I did a video with UADX and the M1 processor, and I found that 96 kilohertz was actually running more efficiently in Pro Tools than 48 kilohertz. So today we're going to do some testing on an Intel Mac and see if that follows or whether it may be an artifact of Rosetta. Let's check it out. Okay, so here I am on my Intel Mac Pro. And this is not the 2019, this is the older Mac Pro. You can see we've got 16 CPU cores available here. And this is the exact same session that I used in my previous video. And I'll have a link up here just in case you haven't seen it, but we've got a 48 kilohertz session and I'm just gonna go to playback engine here, set our buffer to 32, just like it was on the M1. And we have just 14 channels, API vision on each one, all modules engaged. And I'm just going to record enable all the channels here. Check, check. You can see the visions doing its thing there. Um, we're pretty much pegging the CPU here in, in Pro Tools. So it is definitely not happy. It's probably not going to play back or anything. And yeah, media errors. So let me bump that playback engine up a little bit. And uh, I don't have anything else running. I'm using another computer to screen capture this. I'm just feeding my HDMI out into that with a capture card. So there's not even a screen recording software or anything running on here. So this is a, a really good comparison. Okay, so here we are at 64 samples. And we're no longer pegged. We're dropped into the 20s. Let's see if we can play back. No, we cannot. So these UADX do not love low latency, at least on uh, an Intel. So here's 128. Playback. Yeah, playback's working fine. Now let's see if we can record. No, let's give it another go. Check, check. Hey, actually, there we go. We, well, let's give it one more try. Third try is the charm, more three strikes and we're out, we'll see. Check. Okay, three strikes and we're out. So we're gonna have to bump up to 256 probably. And on the M1, we were at 32 samples when we were running these tests. So pretty significant performance difference. All right, playback, yeah, 10%, sometimes nine. And now let's try record. Check, check, there we go. We're recording here. We're staying around the 10% range so far. And uh, that's encouraging, looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna let this roll to about the same length as we have on our other test. And uh, just make sure that we've got the audio rolling without dropouts or anything. And so far so good, still around 10%. And this is at 48 kilohertz. So we are, we're doing okay. Um, right now it's a lower CPU than it was on the M1, but that's because we're at a much higher buffer, 256 versus 32. So now let's save this session as a 96 kilohertz session. Okay, so now you can see that we're in the 96 kilohertz session and our buffer is now at 256 samples, just like it was before. Um, CPU is bobbing around a little bit, and it is a little higher than it was at 48 kilohertz. Okay, so let's see if we can record enable at 256 at 96K. Playback, oh, playback actually crashed. And again, and again. So, looks like we actually need to bump up to 512. That kind of sucks. Now our playback's working, our CPU's about 10%. Basically, it's the same as it was at 48 kilohertz now, but we're at 96 and a higher buffer. Okay, let's give that a go. Check, check. This is 96 kilohertz and it's recording just fine. Hovering 10, 11%, so a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit higher than it was before, but we're certainly not seeing that reversed situation where 96 kilohertz was performing better than 48 kilohertz, uh, like it was on the M1. 
So now I think it's important to switch back to the M1 and do some additional testing. Okay, so is it just Pro Tools on the M1 that acts this way? Let's take a look at Studio One instead, so then we can use a different version of the plugin instead of AAX, and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a track. Hit four, and the X. Vision. And enable all the modules, turn a couple knobs. All right, so we've got the modules on. We've got one track here. And for input, let me do the aux, mute, and test it. Check. Okay, there we go. Now let's duplicate that track. And repeat. Can I duplicate multiples? I haven't tried this before, but probably. Did they work? They did. So I just held the shift to make the changes on all these. Check, check, here we go. CPU, pretty low, about 12%. Check, check, check. And I'm pretty steady at 12%, really. I mean, this is, this is looking pretty good in Studio One here. And, uh, it's at 48 kilohertz, 1.8 milliseconds latency. And uh, yeah, seems to be working great, really stable, 12%. And of course, this is the Studio One version that is M1 native already, but obviously that's not gonna make a difference on the UADX plugins because they're running under Rosetta. Okay, that's probably long enough. Now, let me save this as a template. UADX, we'll just call it UADX. Okay, and let's close that session. New song, UADX template, but we're gonna change it to 96. Cool, okay. There's our 96. And how we look in CPU wise here? 13%, okay. And what's our buffer doing? Sixty-four samples. Okay, so let's do some record. Check, check. Check. Okay. So this is 96 kilohertz. We are at a 64 buffer. So these are the same settings we were in in Pro Tools. And uh, we're actually seeing no CPU jump around at all and uh, a ever so slightly higher CPU usage than 48 kilohertz. But I mean, pretty darn close uh, between 48 and 96. So not a lot of difference. And of course, both are upsampling to 192 kilohertz. So lastly, let's open Pro Tools again on this M1 and make sure this whole thing wasn't just a fluke. By the way, I was using the exact same version of Pro Tools and the exact same UADX builds on the Intel Mac. Okay, so I'm opening the 96 kilohertz Pro Tools session. And if you remember in Studio One, with effectively these same settings, we were getting about 14% CPU. So here's Pro Tools, check, 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 hovering around 30%, so about half as efficient as Studio One was. Check, check, check. And this is at 96. Check, check, check. And we are right under 30% most of the time. Okay, so here we are. Just look at the session here. We're at 48 kilohertz. You're sitting in the 30s. Record enable all tracks. 
38. Check. Now 40s. Uh, yeah, we're consistently higher at 48 than 96. So I think the bottom line on this really is that one, Pro Tools is less efficient than Studio One, or at least AAX is less efficient than uh, the AU versions that I was using. And the other thing is uh, Pro Tools is less efficient at 48 with UADX than it is at 96. So kind of bizarre, but there we are, just proving it all back to back. So there we have our new conclusion. Um, Intel, of course, gets schooled by the M1, and uh, it had to have the buffer a lot higher to even record at all with the UADX plugins. So they're pretty CPU heavy. Um, but Studio One, way more efficient, especially with AU, I think I was using AU, um, than Pro Tools is with AAX. And Pro Tools, less efficient with 48 kilohertz than 96 kilohertz probably a side effect of using Rosetta, but that will remain to be seen once we uh, see the new native versions of uh, the UADX plugins available, which uh, I haven't heard any timeframes on yet. So fingers are crossed that it's soon, but we'll find out. And of course, please leave me a comment if there's anything that I got wrong or anything that you want to see done differently in another video. So as always, thanks for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time. See this little bundle of fun here? This is Commander William Riker. Hi, buddy. Oh, thanks for helping me do my video today.